Hello, and welcome to the Fermi Paradox, a rather interesting game about, well, the Fermi Paradox. Where you get to shape life throughout, I guess, a small little cluster of stars. Not really a full galaxy now that I think about it. Oh, hey, look, Sol. That's our home system. Maybe we'll get us, maybe we'll get dinosaurs. Although that's kind of up to me, so. Eh, who cares? Fluctuations in chemistry affects as oceans lead to any change in water color. As you can see, when I pick these things, random little mild stuff pops up. For now, nothing happens. Oh! That's actually a rather fast evolution event, okay. The raw system. Sapient life has evolved on Virgo. A new civilization is born. A life form on the ocean planet Virgo has started making simple tools and has developed a rudimentary language. But which species will form a Stone Age civilization in the raw system? Actually, I don't really understand that. It says a life form. But the fact that it gives you options implies several. Oh wait, it's like the Sodom Squad. Oh great, yeah. Many were increasingly of the opinion that they'd... Wait no. Many were increasingly of the opinion that they'd all made a big mistake in coming down from the trees in the first place. Douglas Adams, science fiction author, yep. Reminds me of some other things like, um, in the beginning, God created the universe, and huh, this has made very, many people very angry and has been widely regarded as a big mistake. Or something like that. Yeah, so I could choose the Frenner, inhabitants of the equatorial coral forests. These squid people form harmonic and peaceful groups. The Quasis, giant anemone animals, wandering the floating seaweed continents of this ocean world. Or the Shivans, hives of predatory jellyfish creatures dwelling in the deep sea to breed and raiding the surface for food. Let's go for the unbalanced species. I wonder if I can get the Graveyard Galaxy, which is basically kill everything on this planet very quickly. Uh, I think that'll increase the likelihood of them screwing up if I give them more. Or dystopia. Development event this fast? Please be a negative one, please be a negative one. Yes, a great war threatens them. Head hunting. The Shivans collect the heads of their defeated foes. These trophies are very prestigious, and further conflicts are started in order to obtain more of them. Lock the target, bait the line, spread the net, then catch the man. Headhunter V1.0 by front. Huh. Oh, by the way, in this game, some of the quotes are real, some of them are not. Depends on who says it when. Total war this early in their civilization? Damn. They have no population growth. Come on. They're almost good as dead. Give me more penalties to put on their species. We need their population to die. And we don't want them to have more resources. Fucking hell. I don't want them getting more tech. I need to kill them before anything else evolves to get greater your galaxy. Um, no. We want them to have more potential casualties. Uh, we don't want them having more population. We do want them to fail to get the next tech level. A new development event. Reduction. Claiming they decontaminate the water around them. Provide habitats for countless creatures. It bruises those who cultivate large kelp forts in the local ocean on the recommendation of Shivan folk. I'll always remember my pop would yell at something like, Hey, you kids stick to the trail. You don't want to get lost in this forest. Or the kelp will itch will get you. Or a shark. And hey, don't feed those otters. They're wild animals. From the one dolphin show, cetacean ships. Tide cycle 4163, soul system. Hmm. That's interesting. Huh. Well, um, I can make it a dead end, or... Uh... Hmm. What? Fuck it. I'll just go Civilization Builder. Why the fuck not? Maybe I get them to kill each other over other factors. Ah. Come on. Let me reduce their population growth. Yes, they now have a population decline. Don't evolve anywhere else, please. Where the harm potential went up. No! Fuck. Well, those guys will die out eventually. Mm hmm. Okay, so Vexus is getting stuff. Guess I won't be getting Graveyard Galaxy this, ga this time around. Yep. I know, but I thought it disabled the tutorial. 
The Damanis. The Batir. Sure. Why not? The Batir can exist. Let's give them more resources so I never have to worry about them again. Then the seed age. You know, the Shivan broods are in what age? Knowledge. Wait, what? Fucking fine. Fine, they get a bunch of tattoos. Not exactly what I wanted, but, you know, that works, I guess. <sighs> Fucking hell. I really would have thought that would have gone better, worse, uncertain. But I do know I was not expecting that. Well, to be fair, not the first time I've tried Gig Regular Galaxy, and probably won't be the last either. Meh. I do not give a damn. It's pretty hard to give a damn, honestly, when you're realizing that everything is going to shit. And I mean, everything going to shit. Yeah, fine, they get more population. The Batir abandon their brigs and wander vexed in search of new lands. And, you know, that reminds me of, like, this old line from Spore. It's been sticking in my head for years. We admire your wide tracts of land. I remember I was playing a Stellaris game recently. I, or, I guess not recently anymore, but I said that to another player just to hope that they would maybe ignore me for a little bit longer. I think it might have worked. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Volunteer thickets, development event. Oh no. Growth. Oh, they're getting more population. At the confluence of three rivers, the Batir find an uninhabited valley with plenty of luscious food and without any competition or predators. They can settle and grow in peace here. That's lovely, I suppose. Um, huh. Dear Littlefoot, do you remember the way to the Great Valley? Follow the bright circle past the Great Valley. Oh. I never actually did... I don't recall ever watching the land before time. What's it like? I wonder. Oh, well. Ooh. The valley feed the vault vaults here for generations. They didn't find many more valleys like this on Vexus. The abundant food sources of the valley let the Batir population grow and thrive, where the Batir pollute the rivers, and all the delicious food begins to shrivel and rot. It's the Garden of Eden, I guess, Civilization Pillar. Um, I don't want them to have a rotten food supply. They're plants, how, how would the food even rot? Would that be them rotting? Actually, what do they eat? The game says they eat sunlight. How did they get this event? What? I do not know. You know what? It's not my fucking problem. Not my problem, not my problem, and... You know what? Let us reduce... Basir warriors lay down the stone cleavers and abandon the art of war. Should we like harvesting sides or something? They're plants after all. Basir textile artworks represent harmony on Vexus. Huh. Give them more tech, I guess. The Batia warned the death of a great wise wizard. Wait, didn't I just pick the plus tech thing? How does that... I don't care. Also, are they just... Are they growing faster than the unbalanced species? Oh, the Tal Seti system. Uh, where was the other one? Ah, here they are. The marked broods. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the marked broods have negative population growth. Which is kind of funny. Mm. You know, the Vex system has not enough resources. We don't want to slow you down. What the Mark Broods have to do? Ooh, less ethical values. Perfect. Lovely. No, we don't want them being ethical beings. Only the bots here get to be ethical for now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, why are they mourning the death of a Great Wise Person every time I pick the plus science one? You'd think that would be like the birth of a Great Wise Person, not the, not the death of a Great Wise Person. Anyway, the Ross Sitch system. Paradigm shift in rocks. Huh. Wait, paradigm shift? What's that supposed to mean? Okay, I haven't played this game in a while, so I'm actually kind of curious what the subject has. Domestic. What? Hey, that's our thing! Give me that! 
be that bad. Or, well, I guess cat folk? Cat people? Cat folk or something in D&D? &D. They're not exactly cat people. Cat folk are their own thing. Yeah. Virgo is home to a species of predator with a high emotional intelligence and complex social behavior. A beneficial coexistence promises to emerge between these approachable creatures and the coral age marked with whom they appear to seek companionship for the benefits of food, petting, and shelter. Dogs do speak, but only to those who know how to listen. Hatch. That's funny. Um... Fine. Cultural ascent. Cultural descent. Or cultural expansion. So, cultural ascent, the adorable predators are not only safe from the dinner plate, they are also spared from being handled as property. The concept of enslaving these friendly beasts with cages and leashes is unthinkable among the marked. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, no, that's never happening. Sorry. Cultural expansion, natural hunters and loyal protectors, the animals play a key role in establishing new clans on dangerous territories in Virgo. The creatures evolve into domesticated servants. So that's more or less what happened on Earth. Or cultural descent. Domestication of small predatory animals. Predatory animals are primarily seen as food, but are also tied to guard posts on the borders of settlements to ward off unwanted trespasses. Yes! They will have less ethical values. Maybe I should give them more population growth. I think this is the first I've gotten anywhere near close to having a 63% dystopia, anyway. It's not 63, I mean, having a 100% dystopia. Hmm. Wait. Complex predatory beasts are bound to the guard post for their entire lives on ends of very thin leashes. As infants, they learn that no amount of struggling could free them from their tether, and the latter held on to this belief what? Oh. Disappeared. That's, um... That's dark. What have I done? <laughs> you will learn very quickly. Ethics and morality are a suggestion if you decide to watch this video. Anyway, morality is questionable and subjective and a lot of other things. Oh wait, resource scarcity in 12,000 years. That's lovely. That hopefully continues to last. Botir thickets, a new technological age. The Botir reached the cultivation age. Alright. The Batir learn to mine simple metals, which they shape into a variety of tools. Using these, they can more easily prune their own growth and till the soil beneath their roots. They also begin domesticating and breeding animals, using them as beasts of burden, protecting them uh, from protection from herbivores and a source of fertilizer manure. All oh, right, they're plants. Eh. The, D the Damanis have long plagued our herds. They are clever creature creatures, which makes it a great sport to kill them when they attack. The Grey Ones, Batir, Watcher Collective, Fourth Age, Cycle Two, Vex System. Wait. Aren't the Damani another one of the alternative options for this same planet? Huh, it's all interconnected. So it's like alternative timelines, maybe? Weird. Well, um, I guess... Advancements? Question mark? Non sapient plants are gathered and used to build the first large settlements. Seed, storage, and grafting techniques are the Batir to shape the coming generations. Sure. They are growing really fucking fast. Mm -hmm. An influential marked fiend rises to power on Virgo. No, I'm not taking either of those negatives. Um, take one of these. The Batir invent simple metal tools and vexes which they use to print themselves until. Yep. Marked Bruce development event. What's this? Why does it have element event? Depopulation in raw. Oh no! I just I decided to despair that. Good. Maybe maybe fate wants them dead too. Ow. Terrible monsters from the deepest oceans are disturbed by the activity of swarm traps. All mocked are in danger as these terrors begin to hunt them. There's only three real monsters, kid. Dracula, Blackula, Sung of... Uh, uh, sorry, Dracula, Blackula, and Sung of... Un of Kong. Now quit picking your nose and knead that dough. Mr. Panucci, Futurama, 21st Century CE Souls. <laughs> Wait, so Futurama... Is Futurama supposed to be canon in this game or something? Oh god, I'm imagining all the shenanigans now. 
Ah. Let's see. Regular development or prevention? Hmm. Nah, let's go with prevention. They just move. And then let's give them, like, a tiny bit of extra population. And they'll be fine. So we look back, they now have 0% population growth and 0% decline as a result. Whereas these are at 28% despite being the balanced species. What the fuck am I now? This was a mistake. <laughs> They're at 9.6 million population right now, and it was a horrible mistake to let them get there. Devastating six plagues and as many bites here. X is good. The mark reached the aquaculture age. Over many generations of trial and error, well, yeah, obviously, the marks learned to domesticate the aquatic flora and fauna of Virgo. This aquatic farming and herding leads to greater population densities and more specialized professions, leading to new advancements in governing technology and philosophy. Civilization began in the Fertile Crescent not because it was an Edenic place overflowing with natural resources, but because it was so hostile to settlement that a village of any size needed careful management to survive. Susan Weisbar, American author, 21st century CE, Soul of the Storm. Hmm. That... That is an interesting way of looking at it. Necessity, huh? Well, this case is the Fermi Paradox, right? So in all seriousness... Also, I'm not being too funny because I don't really have many funny commentary bits unless I'm talking to someone else, sorry. <laughs> But that aside, look at it like this. What if the Fermi Paradox is... What if we take... Like, right. Something big tied to it is the Drake Equation, which is basically an idea of trying to estimate from a lot of estimates already how long the civilizations will last, how many there are in any given time in the universe, yada yada yada. Long story short, it has to take into account a lot of things like how often, how hard is it to evolve intelligent life and whatnot. And while we assume that, in many cases, that intelligent life is an end goal, where it goes inevitably, what if it doesn't? There has to be an evolutionary pressure in order to evolve intelligence. If it was not an evolutionary advantage in most cases, then it wouldn't usually evolve, which could make it an outlier of a trait to adapt to. Similarly, what if it's an uh, unusual tendency to get opposable thumbs, which... Oh god, I'm going down this branch. No, 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 I'm not thinking about this. I knew what the raw system would go down the wisdom path in the aquaculture age, so they don't get more growth, so they stay balanced and they do fine. The marks can now build stable lairs in the oceans of Virgo and sustain them with aquaculture. Good. You know, the Vex system, um... Uh, everything's fine. By the way, do you know that the developers of this game are constantly adding new events and shit? It's really nice. A battle over an important Batir planting is won by an army of scythe bearers. Soul system evolution event. Oh boy, lovely. Sapient life has evolved on Earth. What are my options? Mm-hmm. A life farm on the garden planet Earth has started making simple tools and has developed rudimentary language. But which species will form a Stone Age civilization in the soul system? Many were increasingly of the opinion that they'd all made a big mistake in coming down from the trees in the first place, yes. Very lovely book that I love. I love the Douglas Adams novels. Uh, so we have the dolphins. So long and thanks for all the fish. So sad that it should come to this. We could try to warn you all, but oh dear. Humans, of course, and the dinosaurs. Rawr. Oh shit. Not any. Rawr. <laughs> you know, balanced species is the dolph. <laughs> Fucking. A fucking dolph. It's oh my god, my hair keeps getting in the way of the dam. My hair is about as long as the bottles, which makes it so like it gets in the way of the eyes, freaks out the sensor. Oh god, freaks out my camera. Anyway, balanced species. Yes, the balanced species it is. So, after the Douglas Adams quote, I just I just have to do it. I'm sorry. On Earth, the dolphin civilization is born. So long and thanks for all the fish. So sad that it should come to this. Yeah, why is that stuck in my head now? God damn it. <laughs> Influential Bottier Warden rise upon Vexus. Bottier Forest Development Event. Great. Uh, I'd say I'll do this and then I'll stop what I'm doing right now.
Seems like a good decision. Vatir Forest. Power in Vex. Yeah, it's after this. Go up and about sandal, we'll save it for now. The riders of Vatir roam the wide plains of Vexus. They band together in great hordes, outrunning every army and trampling their enemies to the ground. Conquering the world on horseback is easy, it is dismounting and governing that is hard. Yalu Chukai, advisor of Genghis Khan, 12th century CE soul system. That, that actually seems kind of fitting, now I think about it. So speaking of horseback archers and beings that ran around on the stab, um, I wonder if I should play CK3 sometime. One of my favorite uh, regions to start in is actually in the 867 start of that game uh, within the step. Absolute power. The writer hordes dominate by Sierra society. Civilization is composed of mighty mounted warriors and those who serve them. Yes. Very good. The Batir Forests, the Marked Games, and the Dolphin Schools. Yeah, they're fine. Fine resources. Yeah, this seems like a good place to stop. Well then. And a good day to you all. And that is, I guess, probably going to be episode one, if I ever decide to revisit this, of the Fermi Paradox. See ya. Yeah.